right, folks. Speaking of Texas socialism, gem time. Are we calling it Texas socialism or is it honky tonk socialism? Well, I think for you, we'll call it honky tonk socialism. Yeah. I think for Heidi, the congressional candidate, gotcha. we'll call it Texas socialism. <laughs> for Griscom, we'll call it honky tonk socialism. You know, let's, yeah, let's be fair here. Um, also, you know, I'm trying to build that, you know, get rid of borders. Okay. Politics. All right. Honky tonk first. You can honky tonk uh, anywhere. Uh, honky East. tonk the whole world, man. <laughs> honky tonk. <laughs> honky tonk don't know no boundaries. <laughs> Oh, Lord in heaven, how am I going to bring switch? Honky Tonk to Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> I think sure he wants more. One. I think he wants Honky Tonk in Beijing. Oh, yeah. More. I'd be down for that. I'd be down for that, too, um, actually. Live show Beijing. Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that will test a lot of our hypotheses very quickly. Yeah, anyway, I was going to say, uh, you might leave a little bit less optimistic. Oh, DJ. let's... Uh, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. You know, so luckily for a lot of folks, um, they're, you know, this weekend, a lot of workers across the country are going to be able to enjoy a three day weekend, which is a very rare thing for Americans uh, to be able to experience. You know, think about it. Most people work their entire lives. And the average experience that you have on the weekend is you don't have a day that's not bordered by the work day. It's actually sort of bizarre when you think about it like that. Um, and again, you know, let's hope that people are celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day and not the a holiday named after a genocidal maniac. Um, but, you know, here's the fact is across the board, Americans don't get enough time off of work and we're also working way, way too much. So we often talk about the 40 years of wage stagnation in the United States. But I also think it's important that we introduce to the conversation the understanding that the wage stagnation, you know, came with massive amounts of profits and increases in productivity. And there's also no reason for us not to also demand as parts of fair wages for fair work, less time at work. Um, and not having to sit so spend so much of our time in the office 40 hours a week um, and with so few vacation days. This is super important as we start to move into um, you know the future where we are starting to talk about you know how are we going to deal with the new economy that there's more technology that's changing the way that we work. Um, but also it's really crucial when we start to talk about trying to lessen the amount of energy consumption in the United States. Um, a CEPR study that came out in 2006 um, cited that if the United States were to adopt European levels of work, so just similar time off, that the United States energy consumption would drop by 20%. Mm. And now we're not saying that the European system is ideal. I think that we should actually demand even more than it's currently uh, the system in, in Europe. But just understanding that how much energy that we're using to maintain the system, that a lot of people, and pretty much most of the folks listening to this podcast, I'm sure recognize um, that, you know, it's not very productive to be at the office or to have to be at work 40 hours a week. You know, we have so much more um, in our own personal lives and our own human uh, value that we're not able to experience because we're spending so much time at work. And also a lot of time at work is spent sort of messing around because we are there for far too much and we have a real look at Matt next to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I just wanted to hit uh, two quick things. This is not an old issue. Understanding that the exploitation of workers is not just the surplus value that's created, but just sort of forcing people to be um, in the workplace so long has been a major part of capitalism. This is Karl Marx um, and Capital, you know, from a very long time ago. In its blind, unrestrainable passion, its werewolf hunger for surplus labor, capital oversteps not only the moral, but even the merely physical maximum bounds of the working day. It usurps the time for growth, development, and healthy maintenance of the body. It steals the time required for the consumption of fresh air and sunlight. It higgles over a meal time, incorporating it where possible with the process of production itself so that the food is given to the laborer as to a mere means of production, as coal is supplied to the boiler, grease and oil to the machinery. So we really need to be talking very much about reimagining not only the power structures involved with work, but also the way that we're working and the amount of time that we're spending in the office um, and just like the workplace in general. Uh, John McDonald, the Labor Party, just pledged that labor is going to pursue a 32 hour work week with no loss of pay, which is a very important aspect mm -hmm. of this plan. Um, one, by increasing the uh, you know required leave time uh, under something that the UK workers have a huge advantage over us on. And two, through the use of sectoral bargaining. 
Now in the United States, we can achieve this goal through boosting and expanding the union movement and by supporting Bernie Sanders' workplace democracy plan, which specifically includes sectoral bargaining and includes an important uh, aspect of that is negotiating the amount of average work time for American workers. So that means more vacation times, paternity leave, maternity leave, um, you know, uh, personal time, and just significantly more holidays and significantly uh, reduced uh, working day. Um, and lastly, a jobs guarantee can provide the needed pressure and worker confidence to demand both better working conditions and higher wages, but also for shedding ba a basic standard um, that's not the 40 hour a week standard that we've started to see. Study after study has found that productivity actually increases if you're able to cut the uh, weekly hours that workers are in the office because nobody needs to be working for eight hours a day, five days a week. Um, it's just really is not a way that uh, our, our bodies are designed. It's not how we socialize. It's not how we think. And it's really been something that's been forced upon us for the past 150 years, which is not very natural. Um, and we absolutely need to include this in our demands for a more equitable future. That's great. I think about that a lot in terms of uh, higher education discussions. Mm -hmm. And like, frankly, if you're just putting people in a room and having them watch like NBA highlights for four years, I think the state should pay for that just to get them out of like the labor force for mm -hmm. a little bit and like let them just do whatever you want in these like rooms. We're going to make these great buildings for you. Follow you, follow your dreams in there. Like it doesn't matter w what the payment payback is. Like in terms of like, can you profit a business owner on your way out? Yeah. Like, uh, it's just good to like have people not have to worry about working. Like I worked um, part time jobs throughout college, and no, but people shouldn't have to work when you're trying to. You're still trying to learn. Oh, I mean, it was the same thing right. here, and it was devastating. And you know, Matt and I just to plug a literary hangover. You know, we did talk about this oh, yeah. a lot um, when we were talking about the Oscar Wilde essay, "The Soul oh. of Man Under Socialism," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where you know reductions in the working day is a huge part of uh, you know his uh, philosophy because it really is such a. Uh, serious hamper on the human condition to just always be basically machines in a, in a system. And again, a system that doesn't work for us and a system that if we continue to support and be cogs in is polluting and destroying the earth. 100%. Uh, there's a book that came out in the 1980s called Time Politics, which suggested that this is going to be another frame of how to understand mm -hmm. the workplace battle. And I think that is an important frame. Isn't there also a Justin Timberlake movie based on this? <laughs> that was when it really clicks for me. It was the Justin Timberlake movie. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.